Hey guys, so today I am going to cover a topic that I have not really seen anything on. I have a trail gear hydraulic assist on my steering down here. Um, I'm running a Durango steering box and overall the thing is really good, it's just really slow. Um, and after some research, I realized that that is because there is a flow restrictor in the stock steering box here. So even though I have a uh, smaller pulley wheel on there also, I'm still getting a lot of flow restriction from the restrictor in there. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to pull that restrictor out, I'm going to pour it out just a little bit, get some more flow through there, and hopefully that should make it better. So this is a relatively simple procedure actually. Um, you're going to want a 5 ace open end, um, and a 7 ace deep well socket, probably an extension on that just to make things easier. Um, I've already gone ahead and loosened everything just to make it a little quicker, um, but I'm going to take you through the process and then get everything back together and see where we're at. So the first step is going to be to take this upper piece off here. Uh, if you've ever taken one of these boxes off before, you'll know that this is probably very stuck. Um, you don't want to kink or tear this tube here, otherwise you'll have to replace the whole line. So it never hurts to spray a little bit of something in here to uh, kind of help break that free first. But this is a 5 ace, and then you're going to break it free. It's probably going to be stuck, so you're going to have to wrench on it a little bit. Make sure that this um, connection is spinning freely on the tube here so that you don't break anything. I did pull my... Uh, radiator fluid reservoir out of the way just so I've got some more room here. I definitely recommend doing that. So this is going to screw out nice and free in there and then this tube is actually going to pop straight up and out. I'm going to set it right here so I don't get anything in there because as you can see this is pretty dirty in here. Um, then next I'm going to take a 7 ace socket slide it right over this nut on here and that nut is actually the flow restrictor so that will most likely be very stuck as well mine was this is the first time it's ever coming off and this box is maybe a year and a half old at this point maybe two um, but it was quite stuck so I'm just gonna keep going until that's nice and loose and then there's actually a plate inside there that's gonna push this out towards you so just be careful not to drop anything. I do have some rags underneath here to catch anything because it will be pushing fluid out. Not a ton, but there will be some. Um, and this is your little piece right here. That's that flow restrictor. If you look through there, there's not a lot of flow that you're going to get through that. Um, especially when you need to push a ram, that's not quite going to cut it. So we're going to take this, we're going to throw it in a vise and drill it out just a little bit. All right, so I've got this drilled out. Um, it's a relatively simple process. I just stuck it in a vise so it couldn't go anywhere. The original hole was slightly larger than 1 8 here, um, and 9 64 just barely did not fit. I used um, West Texas Off-Road. They make the Redneck Ram kits. Um, I used their recommendation of using a 5 30 seconds bit um, so I actually did the 964 first just to kind of open it up just a little bit and then I went from there to a 564 or a 530 seconds my bad um, to open it up all the way it was not a difficult drill um, especially with all the fluid in there it acted as great as cutting fluid so I just kind of let the weight of the drill do the work um, you can see I've still got some filings in there so I'm going to use a rag and probably some air and get those filings up before I put that back in there. I want to make sure that this is super, super clean. I don't want any metal shards in my uh, power steering system here, especially with the RAM, it'll eat seals. So, I'm gonna get this cleaned out and then we'll put this back in. All right, so I got this all nice and clean. It ended up being that Q-tips were my best friend in the process of this. Um, I was able to kind of get all the little filings out without having to worry about contaminating anything. 
Um, air worked pretty good, and rags worked pretty good, but Q-tips were perfect for this job. Um, so I'm just going to get that back in there. You're going to be fighting that little damper again, putting it back in. Um, so you're going to have to push pretty hard um, while you start screwing it in. And then put your 7 8 back on here. Make sure that's good and tight. And then we're going to take this. Make sure that I don't have any dirt or filings or anything in here. I'm going to keep that nice and clean. I am currently having fluid pouring out of there, which is not a bad thing. Um, it's kind of helping to keep the whole thing clean as I do this. That hand tight. And take my 5 ace open end. Right about the same line where it was when I took it off. You can kind of tell there's usually a dirt line on those threads. Get that nice and tight. Everything looks good to go there. So I will just be pulling my rag out from down here. Putting my... Uh, Reservoir back in place and should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Um, one more quick side note now that this is all the back together. Um, I do highly recommend re-bleeding your system once this is done. Um, not only to um, get make sure that there's no air in the system or anything, but to replenish the fluid that you probably lost in the process of removing and reinstalling this. Just want to make sure you have enough fluid and make sure there's no air in your system to make sure it's running as best as it can, especially with this um, new high flow valve in there.